Greetings to all our friends on Shalom TV. You're very, very welcome. And uh, we are deeply grateful for connecting with you today. And we start our prayer for the sick in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My name is uh, Deacon Tady O'Connor, and uh, I'd like to share with you some thoughts on prayer and praying for the sick over the next uh, 25 minutes or so. I come to you uh, today in the name of Jesus and through the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm asking the Holy Spirit, now invoking the power of the Holy Spirit, to bring us all into this moment, wherever you are in the world, that we will connect through the power, through the advocate that Jesus sent, that Jesus sent us for healing and for prayer. Today I'm going to be drawing on the Word of God. When I was sick myself, I was three and a half months in hospital. I was eight weeks on the life support. And since I came off the life support, which is more than 12 months ago now, I'm still in recovery after COVID. But I'm very grateful with the recovery and I'm very grateful with the impact of the Word of God. I have immersed myself in God's Word. And that's what I'd like to share with you today. And also I'd like to pray with you and for you today. Now, a lot of my ministry and a lot of the Word of God comes to me in hymns, through hymns, singing hymns. Because I sing hymns, I've been at it since I was seven years of age. But I discovered in my recovery that singing particular hymns really helped me because it helped the Word of God to rest in my soul. It helped the Word of God to rest in my soul. And that indeed is the teaching of our church where it tells us that song and music travels it helps the prayer to connect. It carries the word of God into our soul. Music and song carries the word of God into our soul. So I'd like to ask you now to fill your consciousness with this moment. Fill your consciousness that you are speaking to Jesus from your heart. And I'd like you to join me now and just listen if you want, but let the word of God through these words rest in your soul as well. As we invoke the touch of Jesus. So whether you're in hospital, whether you're in the nursing home, you may be at home, you may be homebound. Indeed, you may be walking around listening to or looking at this on a phone or on your laptop. You may just be carrying some cross, some division maybe in your life. Maybe it's family, maybe it's relationships. This is going to help you. This is medicine for your soul. This is medicine for your own relationship with Jesus and your own relationship with Jesus is the foundation of all other relationships because he is the source of peace he is the source of healing he is the source of wisdom and truth so we sing together Lay your hands gently upon us. Let their touch render your peace. 
Let them bring your forgiveness and healing. Lay your hands, gently lay your hands. You were sent to heal the brokenhearted. You were sent to give sight to the blind. You desire to heal all our illness. Lay your hands, Jesus, lay your hands. Lord, we come to you through one another. Lord, we come to you in all our need. Lord, we come to you seeking wholeness. Lay your hands, Jesus, lay your hands. I'm asking Jesus now to touch your spirit wherever you are, because at this moment, I am connecting with Jesus through his real presence. I'm connecting with his spirit. He's connecting with mine. That is very obvious. It says it in scripture that we would not be able to pray only for the spirit within us. We would not be able to listen only for the spirit within us. So whoever is listening to this, we are connected spiritually through the power of the risen Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit. So we pray again together in song. Lay your hands gently upon us. Let their touch render your peace. Let them bring your forgiveness and healing. Lay your hands, gently lay your hands. We rest in the silence with Jesus, with his mother Mary, I will proclaim for you from the Gospel of Mark. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Your words are spirit, Lord, and they are life. You have the message of eternal life. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When they had crossed over, they landed at Genseret and anchored there. As soon as they got out of the boat, people recognized Jesus. They ran throughout the whole region and carried the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages, towns, or countryside, they placed the sick in the marketplaces. They begged him to let them touch even the edge of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. This, my friends, is the gospel of the Lord. My friends, I invite you now to gaze at the monstrance, to gaze at the candles, and bring the light of Christ within you. We sit in adoration, we sit in silence, 
to adore Jesus. Through this technology today, I invite you, my friends, to allow Jesus to adore you as you sit with him. Because, my friends, this is what is deepest in his heart. He created you. You are precious in his sight. You are precious in his eyes. And there is nothing greater for the God of creation is to be able to gaze lovingly upon you. His creation. His unique creation. You are unique wherever you are in the world. Wherever you hear this in the world, that is the mystery of God. You are unique in his eyes because God is love, unconditional love, unconditional mercy. And when we receive his mercy and his love, then we are healed. We are healed spiritually if by the grace of God we can allow his love into us. We are healed spiritually then we will be healed emotionally and our bodies will be healthy. They begged Jesus to let them even touch the hem of his gown, touch the edge of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. That is awesome, my friends. That is awesome. That is an awesome experience. That is awesome knowledge to know. We are listening and we are reading this after 2,000 years, and it's as true today as it was then. We are so blessed. Now I'm going to sing for you a beautiful psalm that was written by a priest, Father Liam Lawton, and it's based on an Old Testament psalm. The Lord will heal the broken heart. God will seek the lost and find them. My friends, I invite you to join with me if you're familiar with it. You may pick up the response as we go through it. And if you're not familiar with it, you just sit and listen to it and allow it, the words, to rest in your soul. And that will heal. That will heal you. That will bring you healing. They're very encouraging words because... It says, the Lord will heal the brokenhearted. God will seek the lost and find them. In other words, there is nobody lost. Nobody lost. He will seek the lost and he will find them. He's gazing and he's looking for all of us to give us the adoration. Even more powerfully, then we can hope to adore him. The Lord will heed the broken heart. God will seek the lost and find them. I will bless the Lord all of my days. I will bless the Lord and give God praise for the humble heart the Lord will guard in the Father's care. May you rest from harm. The Lord will heal the broken heart God will seek the lost and find them when the poor shall cry they shall be saved God will hear our cry live not in shame God will guard you alive from sin's distress. Let us love the Lord 
may God's name be blessed. The Lord will heal the broken heart. God will seek the lost and find them. You who live in love shall never die. You who keep your word need never hide. For the Lord will see the righteous one. May the peace of God be your life and hope. The Lord will heal the broken heart. God will seek the lost and find them. My friends, take your time with those words. Listen to it over and over again. That's what I did when I was in hospital in recovery. I listened to hymns that spoke to my soul, that spoke to my heart. I listened to hymns over and over and over again. I could have listened to the one hymn for two hours, for example, before I go to sleep. That is giving time to the word of God to heal you, the greatest medicine on the face of the earth, the word of God. And my friends, when you fill yourselves with the word of God, there is nothing more you can possibly desire. It will fulfill all your desires. The word of God is so wholesome, so powerful, so sweet, it will meet all your desires. There is nothing more you can possibly desire. Listen to the word of God over and over and over again. That's what he meant when he gave us his prayer, the Our Father. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us today the daily nourishment that we need, the spiritual nourishment that we need on a daily basis. Moment by moment, we need it. Immerse yourself, my friends, in the word of God and gazing at the Eucharist. The word of God and gaze at the Eucharist. He lift us the Eucharist and he sent us the new advocate, the Holy Spirit. I will send you an advocate and that advocate can teach us. He's in me, he's in you. That's what has brought us together today. That's the unity of God across the entire world, across the entire universe. The unity of God, the awesome power beyond our minds, beyond our eyes, beyond our ears. That's the awesome power that we surrender ourselves to. My friends, through the power of Jesus and the unity of the Holy Spirit, I hope this time brought you something along the journey of faith, along the journey of healing. Our sickness always will teach us. That's what I discovered, my friend and my sickness, through my sickness. I was being taught. 
by the Holy Spirit himself. And now we'll conclude with a blessing. May God, the eternal Father, keep you steadfast in your love. Amen. May your children bless you and may your friends console you. And may you live in peace with everyone. Amen. May you bear witness among people to the love of God. Amen. May the peace of Christ ever dwell in your home. May the angels of God protect you. And may the holy family of Nazareth be its model and inspiration. Amen. And may Almighty God bless us all and bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy God, we